starting with the topic engineering cost in this session we will see the construction of an involute in this particular session we will see the construction of an involute for a circular curve so first we will see what is involute so when a straight line rolls without slipping on a curve then the locus of any point on the straight line is an involute to the curve application of involute for a circular curve is useful to design the gear tooth profile for the efficient power transmission using the gear train we know that gear boxes are used to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft so to transmit the power using the gear box or gear train in most efficient way the gear tooth profile means the shape of the gear tooth curvature is important and in most of the cases involute curvature for the circular plane is used for the gear tooth profile in this particular session we will go through the construction procedure of an involute for a circular plane so the problem is considered as a wounding of a string around a circular plane right so for the construction first we will draw a circle of diameter d then we will draw a line op of length pi into d that is equal to circumference of a circle through point o which is on the circumference of a circle here line op is nothing but a string so initially the string is kept tight and point p which is the free end of the string is considered to trace out the involute curve in the next step we will divide a circle into eight equal parts so to divide a circle into eight equal parts we will consider vertical diameter horizontal diameter and then we will draw a line at an angle 45 degree okay so by this way we can divide a circle into eight equal parts here circle is divided into eight equal parts that means we have divided the circumference of a circle into eight equal parts so now we will number all these points so number the points on the circumference of the circle the numbering of the points in anti clockwise direction 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay. now this circumference of a circle is divided into eight equal parts so same way we have to divide the string that is nothing but a line op into eight equal parts same number of equal parts okay and their numbering is like this 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash 5 dash 6 dash and 7 dash 8 dash is nothing but point p okay now after dividing the circle as well as string now we will consider the wounding of a string to consider the wounding of a string first we will draw the different positions of a string during the entire wounding process okay so to draw the different positions of a string during the wounding process we will draw a tangent to all this point 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 of the circumference of a circle so next we will draw a line that is tangent line to the point 1 on the circumference of a circle so here this tangent line is perpendicular to diameter 1 pi okay 
so this line is nothing but the one of the position of a string during the bounding process so similar way we can draw the tangent from the points 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay all these tangents are nothing but the different positions of a string during bounding process now we will mark the different positions of a point on this different positions of a string so first consider a position of a string as a tangent passing through point 1 so when we consider a position of a string at as a this tangent we can see over here o1 arc okay this o1 arc is nothing but that length is equal to o1 dash so when we consider position of a string at this tangent passing through point 1 this o1 dash this first part is bounded over the circumference of a circle so remaining length of the string is 1 dash p so new position of point p is obtained on this tangent like this so now a string is going to be bounded the new position of point p that means p1 will be obtained at a distance 1 dash p from point 1 on the tangent passing through point 1 so by this way we obtain the new position of point p which is at a distance 1 dash p from point 1 as o1 dash length is already bounded over circumference of a circle so this point is nothing but the point p1 similar way when we consider a position of a string as a tangent passing through point 2 then two parts of a string that is o1 dash and 1 dash 2 dash are already bounded around the circumference of a circle okay so remaining string is 2 dash p okay so similarly on tangent passing through point 2 the new position of point p that is p2 will be obtained at a distance 2 dash p from point 2 okay so by this way we can obtain the p2 same way we can obtain p3 okay so the position of the string at the tangent passing through point 3 will be considered now three parts o1 1 2 2 3 so three parts are bounded over here remaining string is 3 dash p so on tangent passing through point 3 the new position of point p that is p3 will be obtained at a distance 3 dash p from point 3 okay so 3 as a center 3 p dash sorry so 3 as a center 3 dash p as a radius we will arc draw so p as a center 3 dash p as a radius will draw an arc and that will give you the point p3 same way on tangent passing through point 4 we will get the new position of point p that is point p4 okay now four parts are bounded around the circumference of a circle that means o1 dash 1 dash 2 dash 2 dash 3 dash and 3 dash 4 dash this four parts are bounded from 0 to 4 so remaining string length is 4 dash p okay so 4 dash p length is remaining so to obtain point p4 we will consider 4 as a center radius equal to 4 dash p and we will obtain the point p4 similar way on tangent passing through point 5 the new position of point p that is p5 is obtained at a distance 5 dash p from 5 same way on tangent passing through point 
point P6 will be obtained at a distance 6 dash P from point 6 and P7 from point 7 at a distance 7 dash P. Okay. Now this way we have obtained the different positions of point P. Okay. So after obtaining the different positions of point P, now join all this point with a smooth curve to obtain the involute of a circular plane. So here we will start the curve from point P. Okay. So curve will pass from P, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7 and it will end at point O. So this case is the bounding of a string around a circular curve. Okay. Here O is a fixed point which is attached to the circumference of a circle. OP is the string okay. and this string is bounded around the circular curve. Okay. So this curve is nothing but the involute. This particular case is bounding of the string around circular plane. Okay. Now consider that string is already bounded and now we are opening the string okay reverse of this curve right that case is the unwounding of the string so for initial p point is at point o now unwounding is going on so p will come to p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 in a reverse way for wounding we have considered the point on circumference in anti clockwise direction for unwounding we will consider the points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in clockwise direction. Means like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. P point is considered on the circumference because here we are considering that string is already wounded. Now we are opening the string okay, in clockwise direction. So if you follow the same procedure, okay, we will get the different points like this. So this point is nothing but the P1. From 1, it is at a distance 1 dash P. When we start unwounding, okay, so at the tangent passing through point 1, this first part that is 1 dash P is open. So 1 as a center, 1 dash P as a radius, we will get P1. See the tangent at point 2. Okay, these two parts are open, 8, 1 and 1, 2. This part, two parts of string are open. So that is equal to 2 dash P. So P2 will be obtained at a distance 2 dash P from point 2. Same way P3 will be obtained at a distance 3 dash P from the point 3. Same way P4, P5, P6, P7 and P8 we can obtain like this. Now as this is the case of unwounding, so we will start the curve from this point P. Okay. So curve will be started like this. Joining the point P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, we will get the involute. Okay. So this one is the case of unwounding of a string. Now we will see normal and tangent at any point S on the involute. First mark point S on the involute as per given data. Okay. Let's say this one is point S on the involute. Now Join line as C, where C is the center of the circle. Here C is the center point of the circle. So join line as C. Now bisect SC and mark point M. So here M will be the midpoint of SC. Now considering M as a center, draw a semicircle towards the end of the curve. Okay. If you consider M as a center, 
and suppose you have to draw semicircle so there are two possibility one will be above cs line and another will be below cs line so which one we have to consider this the semicircle which will be towards the end point of the curve so bottom one we have to consider so we have to sir draw semicircle like this okay now mark the intersection point of semicircle and circle okay this white is the semicircle line and pink one is the circumference of a circle so this intersection point is marked mark the intersection point as point a so a point is marked over here now to draw normal and tangent first draw line joining s and a okay so line joining s and a is the required normal at point s so this line is nothing but the normal at point s now we know that tangent is perpendicular to the normal so we have to draw a line which is perpendicular to normal through point s so draw a line t1 t2 perpendicular to normal sa through point s which is the required tangent as point s so t1 t2 is drawn over here so this t1 t2 is nothing but tangent at point s so this is the procedure to draw normal and tangent at an involute for a circular 